If you're a pet lover, you've got questions. How do I keep my puppy from digging up the yard and teach him not to jump all over me? What do I do for my grieving pet after the loss of his furry companion? And are cats really telling us something with just their tails? Well, we've got answers. Plus, the basics all dog owners need to know from our pet trainer 911. Next on Animal Attractions TV. Are you one of the millions of people expecting a new member of the family? The furry kind with four paws and a face that melts your heart? In other words, are you getting a puppy? Well, we're here to help with a series of tips and techniques to guide you both through your puppy's first 12 months. Your puppy's first 12 months is a precious time in that it goes by so quickly, but it's also a critical time in that during these developmental stages, there's so much you can do to set your puppy up for success. In the beginning, you might think mouthing is really cute, but don't indulge it, ever. You are not a chew toy. It can set your dog up for serious problems later on and could even lead to biting. This is Scout, he's a three month old puppy and as you see he loves to chew on my finger. So let's see how this works. What you do, is just make a yelping noise like another puppy that he's hurt. Oh! He dropped my finger. He's like, what was that? What was that noise? And then what you do is you just replace your finger with a toy that he wants. And it's just that simple. Be consistent, do it 100% of the time. It's so cute when puppies jump up on your heels and calves, but what about six months later when you get two big thuds on your back and turn around to see a dog in your face? Puppies need to learn right away that when humans are around, four feet on the floor is the right place to be. Puppies jump up to greet you. It's endearing and it makes you want to just bend down and squish their cute little faces. But if you do, you're reinforcing their jumping. So here's how to teach your puppy not to jump. When you greet her, first put her in a sit. Sit at whatever level of training that she's at. And then you can say free time and greet her. Good girl. Now she jumps up again, just repeat the exercise. And don't pet her, move away from her so you don't reinforce it. Sit, stay, free time. Good girl. And then if you do this repeatedly, she will learn that by greeting you with a sit and keeping four feet on the floor, that gets her lots of love. This will also translate into jumping up to get attention because she'll learn that a cute sit in front of you gets a positive response. You're a good girl. Jumping up when they get their food is something that should not be tolerated either. It signals them that they can challenge you in all other parts of the house. Now when you give them their food, do it in a relaxed, calm manner. You don't want to get them all excited and hyped up. They should be happy and anticipating their food but not clawing at your leg. Put her in a sit position, or if she doesn't know sit, just hold her away and have her wait. Sit, come on, good girl. Then put the food down and say wait, and wait about three seconds, then free time. Good girl. As your dog learns the sit stay and becomes more mature, they should be able to hold that wait command until you give them the okay to eat. People don't realize that this is a very important ritual because it can actually stop future food aggression and later territorial aggression that can be very dangerous. Good girl. Many dogs love to dig. It's a natural behavior that feels good to them. It unearths great smells and reveals cool spots to lie on. So if your dog's a digger, you just have to work with it. And here's the way to go. Sacrifice a digging spot in the shade. Let him see you dig in that spot to signal this is the place. Dig a hole and put some soil in it. Dogs love to dig in the soft soil. The soil and the cool shade will encourage him to return to that spot. And it's a good idea to bring along some of his favorite chew toys to further let him know that this is the designated dig zone. Your puppy's first 12 months is a time of establishing your pack structure and his limits. So before he even starts puppy classes, with clear communication and preliminary training, he will totally be set up for success.
This is Bella. She's a beagle. A breed that everyone recognizes as a great addition to the family. But there's something very interesting about beagles. You see, the breed is very, very old, with roots dating back to ancient times thousands of years ago. The true origin of the beagle isn't clear. Some say ancient Greece thousands of years ago. Others say England before Roman times. But most agree the beagle is probably one of the oldest of the hounds. The main popularity came when the foxhounds were the aristocracy's dogs and the poor man wanted a hunting dog for himself. That's when they started downsizing the uh, English foxhound into the beagle so that they could follow the dog on foot and not have to have horses. Beagles are smart and good hunting dogs. But it wasn't until the 1950s and 60s that the popularity in the breed skyrocketed. I had beagles before I had children. Both of my children grew up in the midst of litters and litters of puppies. And there are so many things about the beagle to love that I don't think anyone can pinpoint one thing. I think it has to be the personality. I love Quincy so much. He means the world to me. I never expected to fall in love with him as much as I have, and he's my best friend. He's my companion. Let's think about this. Manageable size, great demeanor, very intelligent and friendly. Seems like it has all the great makings for a nice family pet. But if you're thinking about getting one, there are some things you should consider. Beagles are generally a very healthy breed, but there are some health problems for you to be aware of. They're prone to allergies, heart problems, and even epilepsy. Your best insurance policy is to go to a reputable breeder. A conscientious breeder will do their best to select for healthy dogs. Because they are active dogs, they need at least a daily walk, but make sure that their nose doesn't carry them away from you. Although beagles are calm and loving around children, because they're hunters, you have to be careful around non-canine pets. Beagles are a sweet, lively, curious breed that love people. But remember, beagles have minds of their own, so they need patient training and somebody who is comfortable Wait. being a strong leader. Stop. Sit. Without the proper training, they can develop some bad habits, such as obsessive barking, biting, or just generally getting into mischief. One of the things that I think that I love the most about getting a beagle is they have a very independent personality. They're not always on your side, but I think that's also one of the things that's most challenging about him. And there have been many, many casualties. It can be a dustpan, it can be toilet paper, it doesn't matter what. And he just takes that and gets his little trot and he runs. Of course, because they're bred for stamina, beagles need a moderate amount of exercise every day. And so do kids, so what a great match, right? And both need room to play. People who successfully keep this dog in the city are committed to taking them on walks every day and may even have an outside area for them to explore in. The perfect owner for a beagle is just about anybody who has the time for a dog and anyone who does not want them to be a protector. If you are looking for a companion to play with, to love, the beagle is the perfect companion for you. Just don't ask him to guard anything. Beagles love companionship and may need the company of people or other dogs so they don't become depressed. So it's important to not leave them home alone for extended periods of time. They could get into mischief. And because they're highly intelligent, it's best that you both find the time to be trained. And then keep it up. After the training, Quincy's now the dog that I wanted him to be, and I knew he could be. I can come home at the end of the day, Quincy's happy to see me, we'll go for a walk, maybe we'll play, but then he will lay at my feet and just relax with me while I unwind. Nowadays, beagles are constantly being ranked among the world's top 10 breeds. That popularity leads to overbreeding to meet the demands of the puppy. So if you're thinking about getting one, make sure you find a reputable breeder, one that really is devoted to enhancing the breed. That way, you'll have a loving, friendly pet with a very sweet and tolerant disposition. He may be a little curious at times, but in the end, you'll have a devoted, lifelong friend. Isn't that right, Bella? Have you ever looked at your cat and wondered, what's going on inside that head of yours? <laughs> How many people write to me and ask, how on earth can you understand what's going on inside a cat? They seem so enigmatic. Well, really, 
there's a lot of clues that can help us understand a cat. And I think the message at the moment that is very clear coming up from this one is, I'm quite content, thank you very much. <laughs> but actually, there's more going on. The mere fact this cat is curled into a bit of a ball is telling you that it's not the warmest of cats. If it was very hot, it would be lying out long. So even just how your cat lies is giving you information about how the cat is, how it's behaving. Now, a great thing that cats have in their communication that we, of course, don't have is this wonderful tail. And look how controlled the cat is. I'm comfortable. I want to be asleep. How dare you pull my tail out of the way? And tails are very, very, very expressive in all sorts of ways. For example, when you're dealing with a little tiny kitten, initially they haven't got enough strength really to even lift it up. So about three weeks, it's just pretty flat. And then about five weeks of age, it's upright, but just like a rudder. It doesn't really do anything. It's just there. Seven weeks, and they suddenly discover each other's tails, and they start chasing after them and moving and playing with them. And somehow that stays with cats throughout their lives. And it's one of the reasons that owners often think their cats have a sense of humor. And one of the best ways of seeing that is when you're coming home and your cat greets you. What does it do with its tail? Because it's what it does with other cats. It'll suddenly just put its tail upright. It's a sort of high as the tail goes up. But there's another tail movement that you've seen. And that's where it's not just up but it's fluffed up to about five times the size of the normal cat's tail. And the reason for that is, of course, there's a huge physiological reaction going on. The cat is frightened, exactly as when we are frightened or very cold. And you know how the hair stands up on end on your arm. Well, that's what's happening, only much more visibly on, on the cat's tail. And when it is frightened, that's exactly what happens. Reading the tail is one of the most useful things that another cat can do with a cat, and we can do with a cat. Roxy here is about eight weeks old and when she came home, she was already trained to use the litter box. But sometimes it can be challenging to teach a new kitten to use the litter box. With these tips, you can save time and frustration by training them right the first time. And you can also save some dollars too. So here are the tips. Number one, have the litter box set up and ready to use before you bring home your new kitten. Number two, choose a quiet location for the litter box away from where your pet will be eating. Number three, when you do arrive at home, show your kitten where the litter box is right away and place him in it. If he's at least six weeks old, he may already be trained. If this seems to be a new concept for your kitty, take his front paws and gently rub them in a scratching motion over the litter to help him get the idea. Number four, keep in mind that accidents do happen, so know ahead of time how to react. Stay calm and don't punish your kitten. You never want to associate punishment with using the litter box. However, if you see your kitten start to go other than in the litter box, immediately pick him up and place him in the litter box. Sometimes the problem is a dirty litter box. Cats would rather use a carpet than a dirty litter box. Taking us to number five, keep the litter box clean. And here's a simple way to do it. Sprinkle baking soda in the bottom of the litter box before adding litter. Then sprinkle more baking soda over the top. This is an inexpensive way to help litter stay fresher and last longer. And that means you spend less time and money changing it out. Some kitty owners use disposable litter pans. They come pre-filled so you can simply toss the used one away and replace it with one that's fresh and new. There are many good kitty litter products to consider, including the eco-friendly varieties. The best news is that with these simple steps, you won't have to think of litter box as dirty words, but just a simple part of being responsible to your kitty. And they are worth it. Do you have a dog that is totally out of control? A stubborn dog that just won't listen? Well, don't give up. Professional trainer coach Ronald White has helped even the most unruly canines learn to be the well-behaved companions we've all dreamed of. His secret? Teaching dogs and owners what pecking order is all about. Let's join coach and his class for Pet Trainer 911. I love to work with a number of dogs together. There's all kinds of problems. There's jumping, pulling, aggressive dogs, 
and this is going to help everybody out, the dog and the owners. They'll be very pleased after it's all over with. How you doing? The first thing I like to always do is to start the dog off on the pinch collar. So we'll take their regular collars off that they came here with and put their pinch collar on and start training them immediately. The pinch collar does not hurt the dog, it just gives you power and he can feel you. It's pecking orders. Susan, they got this black lab, Homer from the shelter. He was young, full of energy, and this was the first time this dog has been socialized with other dogs. <laughs> That, that's bad behavior, and that's expected. The dogs are not being trained. All of them were in, in it, playing, wanting to jump around on each other. And if you don't get that under control, uh, they get aggressive, and they'll continue to do it, and then you have a dog out of control. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I don't want you ladies to worry about this. It's just normal behaviors of the dogs that haven't been trained. Well, we're gonna take care of all that. What we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna tell the dog, we're gonna do this to the dog, let me have him. We tell him, leave it, leave it. That's what you'll say to the dog. Okay. So next time he starts playing and getting out of line, you pull that lead like I did and you say, leave it. So let's see you do it. Yeah, tell him to leave it, pull the lead. Say, leave it. Leave it. There you go. Leave it. There you go, relax your hand. There you go, you're doing good. So once we show her how to use that leash and to say that, leave it to that dog, and it shows how that pinch collar works, everything comes together. The dog Not knows the and the owner is trained what to say to that dog when he's too much for her. <laughs> well, Joanne, she had three schnauzers and they were pulling her and it's very dangerous to walk three untrained dogs just pulling you every which way. Well, what I did, I took the pinch collar, put them on the dogs and I demonstrated how these dogs would work with me because we had to let her see how they would work with me and then work with her. And the dogs did great with me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them on my left side. I'm gonna double my lead up just like this. And I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna pull back, stop. Heel. Place, 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 place. Stop. Oh my gosh. Heel. Stop. See how I did that? I did both of them. Ron, my dog pulls like crazy. Is that gonna work with her too? Yes, once we put that training collar on your dog and train your dog, he'll be walking on your side immediately. Ready to start training? Sure, sure. Okay, hands down to your side. Well, what I do, I get them all together and I line them up. Uh, and I start them off on a heel and a stop. So they walk towards me and I'll see what dog stop. is pulling or what owner is not holding a leash or their hand right. So I saw Angela stop. struggling with the black dog. Okay. Wait one minute, let me work with you for a minute with your dog. Okay. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to hold that leash. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the lead and we're gonna put this part in your hand. Okay. And we're gonna hold it about. Right, right there, right, right there, ball your fists on it. There you go. Okay. Have your hands down to your side. Okay. And when I say heel, you just start walking. When I say stop, you pull straight back and say stop. Stop. There you go. And when we started, he pulled that leash straight back, stopped, and that dog looked at her and paid attention stop. to it. There you and go. now I knew she heel. had it, because if, if Angela's trained, the dog would be trained. Stop. stop. You're doing good. Heel. 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 We have some young ladies and we had some older ladies and the dogs were listening to them. So it doesn't make a difference how old you are or how young you are. You can train your dog to listen to you. I just can't tell you how thrilled I am. I saw results right away. It's just amazing. You have a great dog for life. Just like relax your lead. Generally, cats are about 8 to 12 weeks before they're adopted and brought into a new home. And before that, we can depend that Mama Cat has pretty much done all the work prior to. But this little girl here, who's just a little less than three weeks old, was found without her mom, and it's going to need a lot of TLC before she's brought into a new home. Now, caring for kittens at this early age isn't really complicated at all, but it is time consuming. So if you don't think you have the proper time, just contact your local rescue organization for help. If you're up for the challenge, here's what you'll need. A box with towels or blankets layered with a heating pad for warmth. For baby kittens, it's almost as good as being next to mom. Very young kittens need to be bottle-fed kitten formula until around four weeks old. Had enough? <laughs> now here's the time-consuming part. Like newborn human babies, newborn kittens need to be fed a lot. 
In fact, they need to eat every hour, 24 hours a day. And then the time between feedings can stretch for every hour for each week of age. For example, for a two-week-old kitten, they need to be fed every two hours. Three-week-old kittens need to be fed every three hours. And four-week-old kittens need to be fed every four hours. And how do you know how old they are? Just check the eyes first. Kittens begin to open their eyes between seven to 10 days old. Then after around three weeks, they begin to grow their teeth and start gnawing on the bottle. Then you can feed them a homemade mush. To make mush, simply take wet kitten food and mix with water or formula. To introduce mush to a kitten, place it on your finger and at their mouth. If they're hungry, they'll catch on. Now, of course, what goes in must come out. Now, if you're playing mommy to a newborn kitten, your job is gonna be what I like to call stimulate the elimination. And you can just use some warm water and a cloth like this. Okay, girly. And then soon enough, your little kitty will be going on its own and your only job as mom will be to clean it up. Are you bringing a new puppy into your home? If so, you're probably asking yourself, will my puppy turn out to be smart? Will he be healthy? And the number one concern of puppy owners, will my puppy be easy to house train? The good news is the answers to those questions really have less to do with faith or being lucky than they do with the right nutrition. Right, Lily? But there's a window of opportunity that you don't want to miss. It's called the growth phase. It's that 12 month period of time during which your puppy has higher fat and calorie needs. It's also when your puppy has the chance to grow to an ideal body weight. Not so much for little dogs like Lily, but for large breed dogs, it's very important that we control their growth so it's nice and steady. They need a special food formulated just for them. Oh, and another thing, unless your veterinarian recommends it, you should never feed puppy food after 12 months for the simple reason that adult dogs actually have lower energy requirements than a puppy. So no shortcuts. Whether your dog is a Great Dane or a little puppy like Lily here, you'll want to feed a clinically proven premium puppy food with key ingredients for the entire first 12 months. So why are these things so important? Well, would you like your puppy to learn faster, to have a better chance of fighting off rabies, distemper, and other diseases? It takes more than vaccinations for the best protection. It takes the right levels of vitamin E plus C, healthy brain and eye development. That's the job from DHA, from high quality fish oils. Omega-3 fatty acids are behind truly healthy joints and bones. A premium pet food can enhance joint development and improve mobility by up to 30% in just a few months. Omega-6 fatty acids promote healthy skin and a radiant coat. And you've probably also learned that high quality protein builds lean muscle and helps your puppy achieve the ideal body weight. But you know what many of my clients have found to be the biggest surprise? It's that the right nutrition even helps a lot with house training. It's true. If the high quality ingredients in your puppy's food includes gentle fibers, it means high digestibility. So your pet will put more of what he eats to good use throughout his body. That leaves less to go out. A little homework in choosing good puppy nutrition with an ideal diet really pays off. You'll end up with a happier, healthier pet, and you'll be happier too. Right, Lily? Have you ever had a precious pet in your family die and then notice some changes in the pet that's left behind? Maybe he appears listless or disoriented, seems to lose his appetite, or distances himself from the family and sleeps more than usual. Based on these outward signs, it appears that dogs do grieve when their canine companion dies. This actually happened to Bailey here, and because they can't talk to us, nobody knows for sure how they really feel. Back about 10 years ago, the ASPCA did a research project called Companion Animal Mourning and found that nearly 70% of dogs exhibited real behavioral changes after losing a pet companion. Helping your dog adjust to this loss will help you at the same time. If you've done positive training with your dog all along, then you're in a really good position to help your dog now. 
This is a situation where you're gonna to wanna to spend a little extra time with your surviving pup. Get back into at least a short walk outside every day, or take him in the car with you when you go for a ride. Outings deepen the dog's bond with you and makes his life more interesting. Give him a good grooming, maybe a bath or a rub down, or maybe spend time teaching him a new trick. Dogs can keep learning their entire lives, and it's a little ritual that the dog can look forward to. If the dog that passed away was the leader of the pack, you know, the so-called alpha, then the only way to replace that loss is for A, you to become the leader of the pack, or bring a new dog into the family. If it is the right time for you to get another dog, try to remember which dog was the leader and see if you can find a new companion that will move into that role. Just like with us humans, it takes time to work through grief. Any positive thing you can do to help out your dog get through that loss can be just as healing for you. Isn't that right, Bailey? Yeah. For all of us here at Animal Attractions TV, thank you for watching. I'm Alex Boylan. See you next time.